Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie and in today's episode I'm going to make a acrylic edge lit clock. Back a little while ago when I did a Raspberry Pi Pico cuckoo clock with the little uh, robot on an LCD screen. In the comments, we started having a discussion and it got on to edge lit dioramas and that sort of stuff. And I thought that would be really cool. And then I realized it would also give me an excuse to buy a laser cutter because I'd need one to do the edge lit acrylic. And I've sort of been looking for a excuse to buy a laser cutter for quite a while. In this episode, we are gonna run with that idea I'm going to start simple, I'm going to uh, make it as an edge lit acrylic clock because I can sort of use some of the stuff from the Pico Cuckoo Clock uh, and borrow that and I've just got to figure out doing the edge lit acrylic uh, to illuminate each number. Let's get started. My first idea is I'm going to make a PCB that will have uh, near pixels so that each slot of acrylic can go over a row of near pixels and then this will edge light that acrylic piece. Now my initial idea is to do a clock uh, but there's always the future possibility that once I've made the PCB you could put any shape in any of the slots. So we could do the diorama idea like was suggested on the Element 14 community site. My clock idea, I've got a few suggestions. I could either do each acrylic sheet as one of the numbers. So for the hours, the first digit, I just need a zero, a one and a two. And then the second digit, uh, and then the minutes, and then uh, again. So then I'd be able to display any time on my clock face, but I feel it's just a bit messy having sort of unequal amounts of slots. Now I guess I could make 10 slots for each digit and then that would give me more possibilities in the future. But my other idea I've had is that I could just make a edge lit seven segment display where each a uh, segment of the seven segment display is one piece of acrylic. I sort of just take the traditional seven segment display and I do on each piece. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I just repeat that for each digit, etc. And three and four. And then I've got seven slots that could be replaced with anything um, in the future, all equal distance, all sort of symmetrical, you know, there's the same in each column. So I think I like the seven segment display option. It gives you the ability to possibly display other things. You can do sort of some characters in seven segment display. Uh, I could do an A, a B, C. So I'm going with the seven seg option. I think my first thing I need to start is to make a PCB that I can put these near pixels on. I think probably three near pixels per segment. I guess the thing is with something like the edge, I'll have the acrylic rectangle and maybe just a engraved bit there. So I could say I only need the LED directly underneath it, but I think I will do three of them just so I could swap any of the segments around or I could put anything else in the slots in the future. I think it, seeing as I'm making PCB anyway, it's not gonna be that much harder and not that much more costly to just make it more flexible for the future. Let's get started with the PCB design for this because I need to get that back before I can continue. Here's the schematic for the Raspberry Pi Pico and the real-time clock. I've just made it 
all modular because I just feel like I've been making sort of similar boards with the Pico cuckoo clock and now this. So I just decided to PCB it as a sort of real-time clock Pico with near pixel output almost dev board. I've got the Pico and I've broken out all the extra pins uh, just so I could connect other things into it. I've got my power so I can power it externally or through the USB on the Pico. I've got a little buzzer and I've also put a header that I can connect sort of a through hole buzzer so I could fly one off uh, and I've put a zero ohm link there just so that you could disconnect the buzzer that's on the board if you wanted to. I've got a near pixel output here. This is actually through holes to connect into a near pixel and then I've got a second output for in this case my near pixel string for lighting up the acrylic sheets. I've got four push buttons now I've actually labelled them R1 to min1 min2 on here but uh, after I got the PCB made I decided it would make more sense just to have hour and minute clocking up uh, and then use the second two for a second hour and minute so you'd be able to set an alarm on the um, board if you want to use it as an alarm clock. I've got the uh, real-time clock I'm using the DS3231 and now I've got different ways of powering it so I've got just on the board you could hook in five volts I've got a barrel jack and I've got a power only USB-C socket uh, so I can pick which one of those I want to put on or all of them just as long as you just connect one up that's the Pico board. The PCB for that is here. So I've made it quite neat. I've made it as small as possible just so it could be used anywhere, but it's all, the components are all on one side so it could be mounted onto something. Then I've got my near pixels. So I've made it two digits per PCB. So for two digits for hour and two digits for minute. So for this clock, I'll need two PCBs, but it does mean I could just use one PCB in the future if I wanted to, or I could use more. I could put three in if I wanted seconds or add more if I wanted the date to be shown as well. So on here, I've got 42 near pixels with their own capacitors. I've got a position for the polarized capacitor, but I also put that back on the Raspberry Pi board so you can pick which board you want that on. In this case, I'm gonna put it on the Pico board because I want to be able to mount these near pixels really close to the slots to stop any uh, light leakage so I don't really want the polarized capacitor sticking up and then I've got an input and an output so that I can just chain these boards as many as I want onto each other and then the PCB for this is there now it's time to get that sent off and get the PCBs back so my next thing to take a look at is the uh, FreeCAD design for the case for this project so I've just made a quite simple box case. I've got a little hole for the power lead to come through uh, and I've got all my slots for the acrylic um, little digits. I've got mounting holes to mount the PCBs close underneath. Now I've not done a base for this because my plan is to have it sit on the table um, and everything's going to be screwed in underneath so there's not going to be anything that will fall out and by not having a base I can get in and press the hour and minute buttons if I need to change the time. That's my FreeCAD design. Now the only problem with this is uh, after designing it I realised that that is too big for our printer bed. So I've redone a split one where it will print in two halves. I think it might actually keep together because the Pico will be connected by four points um, across the gap. Uh, but I also might just glue that uh, together, maybe put a bit of uh, reinforcement in terms of a plastic strip across the gap. And I don't foresee any problems with that. It'll at least do until we get, a, <laughs> you never know, one day we might get a bigger 3D printer and I could print it in one piece. So then my final thing is the segments that I want to laser cut on the acrylic sheet. So this is the first thing I've ever actually cut on my uh, laser cutter after I've sort of rebuilt it with a new tube and power supply, and water pump. Uh, redid all the plumbing and the wiring. It was a bit of a project piece, but it was also quite cheap. 
So um, these are my sheets. I've got seven, there's six there, one there, and then another set. So I need to cut this uh, twice, but this was the sheets of three mil acrylic I had. Uh, I'm engraving the segments and then cutting the outside of them. So let's get the case 3D printed and the segments laser cut. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! So I've got my PCBs back. Now, like I said, when we were designing these, I've gone for absolute flexibility rather than one PCB just to do this project. I thought, how can I make this more usable in the future? So I've got my Pi Pico real-time clock with the near pixel output board. And then I've got my separate edge lit acrylic boards and two of them to make all four sections because I've got just two digits worth on one PCB. Uh, so this means I could add some seconds if I wanted to in the future, or I could just use two in something if I was doing an edge lit diorama or something like that. Now I've got these, we need to get populating them. So I've done something I haven't done before with this project. I've done a lot of PCB designs that have been sent off to be assembled um, elsewhere uh, and to be just manufactured and returned. I've done a lot of PCBs where they've been hand soldered by myself or others in work situations. I've never actually ordered myself a solder stencil. For these boards I've ordered myself a stencil. Now I've got the reflow oven and I've also got uh, a little hot plate. Uh, I'm going to flow these myself. Let's get started putting the components on. So I've secured down the PCB and then aligned the stencil on top of it. I've got some solder paste, which I'm going to apply over the stencil with a credit card. And then I've just repeated it for the other three PCBs. All three have a nice even coat. And now I can just put all my components on to the PCBs. This is very repetitive. <laughs> and now they're ready and in the oven. And once they've been in for the amount of time at the temperature on the solder paste that you're using, it's all ready to take out and cool. I've got my 3D printed parts. Now I've taken those and I've put heat certs into them. I've put M2 for mounting the near pixel PCBs and M3 for mounting the Pico and the real time clock board because this is a bit of a bigger and heavier board. Next I've put on the near pixel PCBs. I've mounted those and then I can put the Pico PCB over the top of the two of those. So I've used a couple little off cuts of the acrylic sheet just to reinforce the gap by gluing them across the two halves. Uh, this will do for the time being, uh, it's fairly sturdy. It'd be much nicer if it was printed as one piece, but that's what we've got for now. Then I've put the um, acrylic pieces in and here we go. Let's have a closer look at it and look at it working. Now because I've put that real-time clock module with the battery backup in it, it's ideal. So even though this hasn't been powered on for quite a while, uh, even without having a Wi-Fi connection for the Pico or anything like that, I can just connect in the 5 volts power, 
turn the plug on and it's working and displaying the clock time. So we've got uh, 13.52. Just like that. No having to find the time out, no getting up for the internet, finding the Wi-Fi is not on. Once I've set it using those little buttons on the PCB, it's just going to remember it as long as that battery is on the PCB. So I really like that. It's really nifty. It's, uh, I think it looked like quite a good little clock for being on a desk or something. That's where mine's going anyway. <laughs> Overall with this project, I'm really happy with it. The slight frustrations were the size of the 3D printer bed and not being able to print this base in one solid piece. But I've got full colour for each of the numerals. Um, I could even change like each segment if I wanted to. The clock idea was just to get me started. Now, if you remember back, the original idea was someone was saying about edge-lit acrylic dioramas on the Element 14 community. There'll be a link to that old discussion. So what should I do with this now? I've got a base that I can remove all of these acrylic segments. So I've got four rows of seven and I can set them to any colour. So what do you think I should display on here? Uh, I could put pictures, I could put changing seasons maybe. Let me know on the Element 14 community what you think I should do with it, how this project should develop. But for now, that's all. So I'll see you next time. Bye.